Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to design this new sticker using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, new stickers are normally text that scrolls. But in this video, we will see how to create this animation right here for each of the news. And if you want to learn how to create scrolling text, I have a video on that. So you can check that out. I will leave the link in the description of this video. So let's get started. Right here we can see I have created this folder called new sticker and I just opened it with VS code. Now let's go ahead and create the necessary file. So let's click on new file and let's create an HTML file. I just name it index.html and now let's create a CSS file. I just name it style.css and let's also create a JavaScript file. I just name it main.js. So let's start with the index.html file and in VS code you can just press exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And let's link our CSS file over here. So I'll just type style or CSS over here in the href. And let's link the JavaScript file over here. So I'll just type main.js. Right now, let's start with the markup of our design. But before that, let's go ahead and add the fonts that we need. So here we can see we are using a font called Poppins. And we need to get the bold version and the regular version and also a thin version for this text right here. So let's go to fonts.google.com. So here I'm in fonts.google.com and let's search for Poppins and let's click on the font and we need to get the thin version. So let's select this and then we need to get the regular version. So let's select regular 400 and let's also select a bold version. I'll just select bold 700. Right now let's click on this button called view selected families and uh, let's copy this link from here. So if you want to add it in the HTML, you can get this link. And if you want to add it inside the CSS, you can get this uh, code right here. So I'll just copy this link from here. And let's go back. And here in the head section, I'll just paste the link. Right now, let's go ahead and start with the markup. So the first thing we will do is we'll create a container division. And let's give it a class of news container. And in that, we need to have a heading for uh, this text right here. So let's create a division with a class of news heading and you can add any text over here i'll just type news right now let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks so i have this extension called live server installed in vs code so once you install that you can just right click over here in the html and click on open with live server and here we can see our design is displayed in the browser now the next thing we need to have are these different news headings so for that let's go back and let's create a container division for that and let's give it a class of news and that will have each of the single news so i'll just give it a class of news single and let's add some news over here so i'll just quickly go ahead and copy some of the news over here all right so here i have created all these news text over here and i have changed the division into an anchor tag because we can go ahead and add the link of the news post over here so here we can see these are all the anchor tags for the news and for the first one, we can see we have this class of active. So by default, we want the first one to be visible. And then we need to add the active class to the second one and the third one and so on. Right now, let's start styling this. So this is how it looks right now. So let's go to our style.css file. And first of all, let's add some styles to the body. So I'll just have body. And I'll just set the margin to zero. We will also add a text over here in the body. So let's go back. And uh, here, I'll just create a paragraph and I'll just type hi, welcome. Right now, let's go back to Stylor CSS file and let's bring this text to the center of the screen. So I'll just type display of grid, place items to the center. Right now, let's set the height of the body to 100 viewport height. And uh, we need to position this uh, news container to the top. So let's do that. So here, we have this container division called news container. So let's type news container. And let's set the position to fixed. And uh, let's set the top position to zero and the right position to zero and the left position to zero so that it is at the top and it is stretched across the screen. And uh, let's also add some styles to this text. So here I'll just type font size and I'll just set it to 80 pixels. And let's set the font weight to 100. 
and let's set the font family to poppins and sans serif now let's go back to our design and this is how it looks let's change the font size of the news so here I'll just type font size and I'll just set it to 16 pixels and now it looks alright so now let's style this news container so here let's add a background color so I'll just type background and let's set the color to 003262 and let's set the color of the text to 73C2FB and this is how it looks let's also add some padding so I'll just type padding and I'll just set it to 10 pixels top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right and let's also add a box shadow so I'll just type box shadow and let's set the values to 0, 4 pixels, 40 pixels, negative 8 pixels RGBA and let's set the values to 0, 51, 98 and uh, I'll just keep it to RGB and this is how it looks right now let's style this news heading so for that we have this uh, division with the class of news heading so here I'll just type news container news heading and uh, let's set the font weight to bold and if you go to this original design here we can see that we have this uh, border at the right side so let's do that let's add a padding right and uh, let's set it to 20 pixels and uh, we'll also set a margin right and uh, let's set it to 20 pixels as well and now let's add the border right and let's set it to 1 pixel solid and for the color I'll just type white and uh, we have a typo over here so now we can see we have this border right right now the next thing we will do is uh, we will set the display of the container division to flex so that the news heading is over here on the left and the news on the right side so let's go to the container division which is news container and uh, let's type display of flex and now we can see that we have the heading on the left and the news on the right side right now let's style this news so let's go back and uh, here we can see we have this uh, container division with the class of news so we need to position all these news anchor tags relative to this container division so let's style that here I'll just type news container news and let's set the position to relative and we'll set the width to 100% and now let's style the news single so here we can see we have this anchor tags with the class of news single so let's type news container news single and the first thing we will do is we'll set the color of the text to white and now let's remove the underline so let's type text decoration and let's set it to none and let's set the font weight to normal and uh, now the next thing we need to do is we need to display just the active news so here we can see for the first anchor tag we have this class of active so what we will do is by default we will set the opacity to 0 and if we have the active class then we will set the opacity back to 1 so let's type news container news single dot active and here let's set the opacity to 1 now we can see we have just one news displayed over here now what we need to do is we need to have a little bit of animation when we go to the next news so here we can see we have this animation when we go to the next news so for that we need to change the transform value so let's go back and first of all let's set the position of this new single to absolute so let's type position absolute and let's set the top position to zero and the left position to zero and now we can see we have the news over here so what we will do is uh, by default here we will set the transform translate y value so let's type transform translate y and let's set it to negative 8 pixels and we'll also add a smooth transition so I'll just type transition all 400 milliseconds is and now we can see that our text is shifted to the top but when we have the active class we need to bring it to the center so here let's type transform translate y 0 and now we can see it looks alright so now if you go back and here if you change the active class from this and if you add it to this news over here 
Now we can see that we have a different news displayed over here. Let's also check out the mobile version. And now we can see when we are on a mobile screen, we have two lines of text. Now what we will do is we will set the overflow of the container division to hidden so that everything outside this container will be hidden. So let's go back and here for the news container, let's type overflow and uh, let's set it to hidden. And now we can see everything outside the container is not being displayed. But we can see that a little bit of the second line of text is displayed. So for that we will add this uh, transparent background over here. So here we can see that it fades in from a blue color to the transparent background. So let's do that. Here I'll just create an after selector for that. So I'll just type news container colon colon after. And we need to set the position of this to absolute. So let's type position absolute. And for the after selectors, we need to have the content property. And uh, I'll just set it to blank for now. Now we need to position it to the bottom. So I'll just type bottom and let's set it to zero. And I'll just set the left position to zero and the right position to zero. And uh, let's also add a height and I'll just set it to 10 pixels. And now if we add a background color, so I'll just type red. Now we can see that we have this uh, after selector displayed over here with this background color. Now we will go ahead and add a linear gradient background so that at the bottom we have this blue color and as you go to the top we will have a transparent color. So here let's type linear gradient and uh, let's type transparent and for the second color let's type this blue color right here. And now we can see that we have this color and uh, it looks like the text is fading out. Right, that's basically it with the design. Now let's go ahead and add the functionality. So let's go back and uh, let's go to the JavaScript file. And the first thing we will do is uh, we will select all the single news. So if you go back to the HTML file, here we can see we have these anchor tags with the class of news single. So let's type const news single all because we're going to select all the news single classes. So let's type equals document dot query selector all. And here let's type news container news single. Now this line of code will store all the new single divisions inside this new single all constant. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to keep track of the current active news. So for that let's create a variable and I'll just call it current active. And by default, I'll just set it to zero. And the next thing we need to have is the number of news that we have. So we can get that from the length of this constant. So let's type let total news equals news single all dot length. So this is store the length of this uh, array inside this uh, variable. All right, now let's go ahead and create a function for changing the news active state. So let's type const change news and uh, in this function let's write the code to change the active class so what we need to do is uh, we need to set the active class to the current active element so we can just type news single all and in square brackets we can just type current active and then we can type dot class list dot add and here we just type active so this will add the active class to the current active element. Right now let's go ahead and call this function. So I'll just type change news. Now if you go back to our website, we can see that the active class is added for the first element. I'll just go ahead and uh, remove the active class from here. And now we can see that the active class is added to the first news. Now if you go ahead and change this current active value to let's try four. Now this should have the active class set to the fifth element because it starts from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this news should be displayed on our website. So let's go back. And we can see that the correct news is displayed over here. So now let's go ahead and uh, remove this from here. I'll just type 0. And uh, I'll just add the active class over here for the first element. Now let's go ahead and create a set interval so that this function will be called every set amount of time. So let's go ahead and create a variable for that. I'll just call it duration. And I'll just set it to 3000, which is 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. So let's create a set interval. So I'll just type set interval. And for the interval, I'll just type duration. And here 
I'll just call this change news function. So here I'll just type change news. Now what we need to do is we need to change this current active every three seconds. So here in this change news function, let's write the code for that. So I'll just type current active plus equals one. So this will add one to the current active. But we also need to see whether the current active is more than the number of news that we have. So let's add an if condition. So just type if current active is greater than or equal to total news minus one because arrays start from zero. And if it is true, then we need to set the current active to zero. Now this condition means that we have reached the end of the news. So we need to set the news back to one. So I just type current active equals zero. And here let's add an else. And I'll just add this current active plus equals one inside the else. Right now let's save this and let's go back to our design. And here we have the first news and then we have the second news. But when we have the second news, the first news is still active. So let's write a function to remove the active class. So I'll just type const remove all active and here I'll just loop through all the news so I'll just type news single all dot for each and I'll just call each of the news n and here let's go ahead and type n dot class list dot remove and active so this will remove the active class from all the news now let's call this function just before we add the active class so here I'll just type remove all active but now let's go back and here we have the first news and now we have the second news. So after three seconds, the news is changing. Let's see whether we have the first news displayed after the last one. So this is the last news. And now we can see we have the first news displayed once again. So that's basically how you can create this news sticker using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Right. So that's basically it for this video. I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. And if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.